What's going on YouTube? Bladezilla here, and today we are checking out another super, super cool Shirogorov F3 Outdoor. Um, this guy was recently launched, uh, you know, depending on when this video comes up, I guess, uh, you know, probably a few weeks ago. But uh, super cool knife in the production line that's at a wicked price point. Uh, when it was launched, I want to say it was 850 US, but that may have changed by the time you watch this video. Um, it's super, super unique in the Shirogorov lineup because A, it's uh, got these really nice bright orange highlights on it on a pretty subtle green kind of outdoorsy look backspacer, or not backspacer, what am I saying? Uh, rest of the handle here in that... Uh, I think it's, uh, what's this guy made of here? I think it's a G10. I was going to say carbon, but it feels and looks more like G10 to me. So, super robust, super durable, at a great price point, and we are going to get into the details of this guy. And uh, I think the main thing that people want to know is how it compares with an F3 NS liner lock, which I just so happen to have an aquatic here that we are going to compare it with in a lot of different angles and details, and uh, get you guys on your way. So... Let's get into it. First things first is the size, which uh, we are going to go grab the measuring tape here and take a look. Let's see what we got. Uh, let's see, should be four inches. Yeah, it looks like four inches on the blade. Overall, should be eight and three quarters, I think. That looks about right, eight and three quarters, depending on how good your eyes are. So that is what we're going to go with. The material on the handle is a Chromax, which is basically an LMAX on steroids, um, but just a little bit of steroids. You know, nothing that would get you disqualified from the Olympics, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, comparisons in the Sheer Goroff lineup. Let's grab a few here. We've got a Neon NL here, uh, F95 in the middle. And we have a 111, which I'll throw up top to kind of give you an idea of the three sizes. Now, between these two, there is obviously a stellar uh, production and custom division and uh, full custom for size. But for most people who's looking at this knife, you're probably looking at a Neon NL. And you're probably looking at, you know, an F95 kind of knife, maybe a turtle, maybe... Maybe you're looking at one of the new F95 NLs, which I happen to have one right here, which is phenomenal. And remember, the angle of the camera, the angle of the dangle is going to make this look bigger uh, from that angle. So we can flip these around, and you'll probably think this one is now bigger. It's kind of tough with light, especially when you're uh, really stupid like me, uh, according to comments. Just kidding. But not kidding. Um, something unique about this knife is that it comes in uh, a really cool leather Sinkovich designed sheath, which I'll show here. And uh, you know, the reason you're like, ah, you know, when does Shiro ever give you a leather case or sheath? And the answer is not very often. But when they do, it's a thing of beauty. Nice logo, and I'm telling you right now, I'm three feet from the camera, and I can smell the case. It's like genuine leather. It smells great. Don't know what kind of hide it is, or blah, blah, blah version of the cow. I don't know. I'm not a leather guy. But you've got a cool stamped in Sinkovich, or burned in, whatever you want to call it. Uh, dual position, so you can run your belt through it, both horizontally uh, and vertically. So if you want to access or access it from the side belt or up top, you can do both, which is cool. On the front, they've got a slot where we've got a cutout in the leather itself, and it just fits around this nice Shiro Goroff quietly. Put a nice little shield on this, like a Shiro shield. And uh, it just fits around that, goes in with a little bit of effort. This guy's been put on twice, there's the, th there's the third time, so it's still uh, a little tight, a little virginous, but Looks good. Leathers of high quality. Stitching seems solid. Can't complain on the case. So, why are we giving you a case, you should ask, right? 
uh, if it's an outdoor knife. Well, my guess is that if you're going to carry this, it's going to be probably on your belt. And uh, easily accessible, rather than in your pocket. So when they do that, they don't give you a pocket clip. Um, is it a faux pas? Maybe. Um, personally, I think it just adds to the cool factor. And uh, for somebody who wants an F3 that's a little thinner, this ticks those boxes. So let's compare this with an aquatic. Because that's what we're here for. We want to see how it is. And without uh, having a bunch of calipers, because I still haven't bought any from Amazon, yet here we are with, you know, $2,500 of knives on the table, we still don't have a $20 pair of calipers. So in hand, um, they obviously feel very similar, but I think this guy is actually thinner all around. Tell me that that backspacer is not substantially different between the two. You guys see that? So in hand, the first thing when I picked it up, I was like, oh man, this thing is lighter, right? Because you're you are losing that tab, right? You're already losing the, uh, the pocket clip. But between the two, I think the distance between the two handles or the frames, I think are different. I think the F3 Outdoor is thinner. You know, you tell me, look at the pictures, look at, does that not look thinner? So I'm assuming the blade would be thinner, right? You're carving up animals and stuff, so you'd think the blade would be a thinner. If you look at the jimping on the two, that's certainly evident there. If you look at the, uh, the, the tell is obviously the blade, but look at inside the actual uh, handles there, the blade's much thicker on the F3NS, right? In terms of length of the handle, I would think they're very similar. I can't see them being too different. Um, but I believe this guy is on multi-row bearings. This guy is also on multi-row bearings, but if you look at them, I believe this guy has the captive pivot system, whereas the F3 Outdoor does not. As you can just kind of tell with that collar on there. So just a, a little bit higher level on the uh, F3 and S, I'd say, to the Outdoor, which is pretty typical when you start talking Chromax versus, uh, in this case, Vanix or S90V on the Terrace. Um, you just kind of, you know, they just kind of tend to give it the premium finish. Um, if we look at the knife on the other side here, um, it's beautiful. You know, we've got a, a very nice uh, liner lock. It's all titanium inside, and we've got uh, we've got milling on both sides. Um, I will try to show this, but it is difficult for me. Um, hopefully, you can see the camera doesn't adjust too quick. But you can see on the inside, there's certainly a ton of added weight savings taken out of that liner, which looks great and not surprising at all. Um, we've got... Do we have a metal insert on this? Yeah, we've got a, me a, re a replaceable metal insert on the lock bar here as well, which is a nice touch. And remember, it's not all about durability on these. It's about uh, tuning the materials. So uh, when you have a Vanex versus S90V versus M390 versus Chromax versus uh, LMAX, you know, maybe that metal changes between them, that interface metal. So it's just to kind of tune that transaction between the two to make it a little smoother, a little, a little bit nicer. I've got no problems with that. Um, ergonomically, I think they are the same. If you look at it, we got a nice smooth cutout all the way around. I will say that this guy has a bit more of a ridge on the inside here. Uh, but we still have that same machined spot on this side, which is evident on both. And, uh, and I believe they are the same widths of frame. I think. If my eyes aren't deceiving me, it might be actually thicker on the uh, aquatic ever so slightly. So maybe that is something that I did pick up on. It's certainly a scaled down version in terms of size that uh, you'll notice right away when you pick it up. And then on the actual 
on the actual mechanism here on the flipper tab, you should see right away, like, there's, they're just different, right? It's not the same knife at all. Everyone seems to think, oh, it's just the same knife. It's not the same knife. It's much thinner uh, and honed down. Um, I want to say, I think they're four, four and a quarter or 4.3 ounces on this. Now, one of the things that I think is super cool about this knife is that in the price point, on a full-size price point sheer sure, Goroff, they typically throw in single row bearings, single row ball bearing system on this, MR, uh, SRBS. They put multi-row bearings on this, which is kind of interesting because they wanted to do, um, they just wanted to get a little more stability, right? Because if you're carving into carcasses and animals and stuff, which is the intent of it, it's an outdoor knife, but I would think it's more of a hunting knife than just being outdoors. Um, you want stability in the blade uh, side to side, right? There's zero law or zero play in these. Uh, it's, it, it, when I go through a sure go off, I don't have to tell you that there's no play in the blade. I don't have to tell you that it's centered. These are just, you know, it's common sense at this kind of price point. It's the best production brand on the market. And uh, you, these are, these are no-brainers. These aren't issues you have to worry about um, like other knives. Uh, at an $850 price point US, it's, you shouldn't have to worry about any of those issues. It's very rare that there are issues. Um, you do still have access to a uh, pocket clip, or not pocket clip, a lanyard, which they built into the back spacer, which looks awesome. And it's certainly useful, especially if you're not, uh, you know, if you're not using that clip, sometimes it's difficult, so you'll want to have uh, that lanyard, which is just nice to have. Um, I don't know how that's going to work fitting into the case if you're going to do it. I guess you'd want to do it kind of like that so that you can have the, the lanyard sticking out, which makes sense. But personally, I'd probably go this way. Is that what it's designed for? To have the flipper tab up. Let's just let's just do a scenario here. So let's let's say it's mounted on your. It's going down your pants on your right hand side. So you'll probably want the flipper tab. How would you want that flipper tab positioned like this? I'm guessing to the back, so that when you pull it out, you can flip it. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. So I don't know how you're going to fit a lanyard in the sheath unless you flip it upside down, which you certainly can do. Uh, so that would be falling out of the case that way. So you pull it out. Yeah, you could do either or. I like how they did that because, like, my brain is telling me that you'd want the flipper tab up top, which is cool. But when you have it up top, it's going to be uh, harder to get a, a, a lanyard on there. So uh, that's cool how they didn't make it so that flipper tab doesn't fit inside because it fits smoothly. But that's clever. I'm glad they did that. And the whole package just uh, feels so cool once it's kind of in your hand like this. It's just a nice little, it's, it's just different. It's different than a normal shear bore off because, you know, normally they're titanium and, and when they aren't titanium, they tend to not do multi-row bearings uh, other than the quant quantium, which is kind of the exception to the rule. And now this, which is, you get a leather case, it's still G10, it's very light, very robust, You've got a backspacer on it, which I don't think the Quantium has. I can't remember. Uh, so typically when they do a backspacer, backspacer on the Shergroffs, they tend to reserve that for their high-end production. Um, and for reference, let's get a low-end production. Here's a quant Quantum where it doesn't get a backspacer. And like everything Shergroff, there's exceptions to every single rule, because if we grab a... F95 custom division knife. I don't think that has a backspacer on it either, which is kind of funny. Custom division, as you can see, and this guy has no backspacer. So, you know, sure, go off. They, they, I'd say 80% of the time follow the same rules, but there seems to be exceptions to every single rule, and they are the ones making them, so they can break them. Now, I thought that the lack of a pocket clip would be a big turnoff for this knife. I really did. But after having it in my hands, first of all, like, it, it fits like a glove. 
it, it's contoured, it's thinner than the standard F3, so it just fits smaller hands better. Um, you still have the nice full finger extra spot on the back here. That's not a problem. I was worried about the green kind of being too green, and it's very subtle. It's very subtly green. Remember, I'm hitting this with a huge light right now to pull out all the colors. And, uh, you know, in the dark, it's uh, it's almost like a black color, like a blackish green. So it's, it's darker than you'd think. Uh, which is fine. The orange, you you know, people probably wonder why do they go orange? Well, orange isn't found in nature, typically. So if you drop this in the bush, it's going to stick out really loud, and you're going to be able to find it. Uh, right? That's why hunters wear orange, um, so you can be seen and see. So it's uh, it's nice. Now between the two colors, you'd think, oh, there could be gaps, there could be, you know, variances and tolerance. This is. If you close your eyes, I'm telling you, you cannot even feel that there's two different materials here. It is as silky smooth as you would expect. Combine that with all the machine work, as is customary on Sheer Goroff. There's there's more machining on the on the dark green, and then micro milling on top of the orange. It's like it's two completely different textures. They've got the angled tops on both sides and then that milling on the inside which just is so well done we talked about the uh, the lock bar insert which is just a nice touch uh, we talked about the lanyard hole which is nicely hidden in there if you want to use it um, the hardware obviously is your grow off standard tool um, but you can use something called a screwdriver if you want to use it you can, I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, you know, if you want to get the tool, you can. But another easy way is just to kind of use a credit card, fold it over on itself and snip it, and you should be able to open this guy up too. They're super simple to, to uh, overhaul internally if you want to uh, maintain them. It's not going to be a problem, especially if you're cutting up animals. Um, I have heard blood is a great lubricant, um, not that Jeffrey Dahmer knows. Um, I don't know why I said that, but I did. Um, but yeah, it should be solid and definitely corrosion resistant balls, I imagine. They're probably stainless. I can't see why they'd be carbon steel balls. And my understanding as well is uh, in the multi row bearing system knives, Sheer Groff uses standard size ball bearings. So I want to say they're two mils. So if you lose one, they're not super complicated to replace like, uh, like the roller bearing system in their customs, which is a nice feature to have, honestly. Um, did they match? Ooh, this is another exception to the rule knife. So typically, Shiro, I've noticed lately, they've kind of matched the backspacer kind of spacing to the jimping on the top of the knife. And if I can find an F95, we can kind of show that. There's your F95. So you can kind of see the, the cutouts there. Uh, the quantum. Well, the Quantum's actually another exception to the rule, so maybe my rules just uh, makes zero sense. But lately, anyway, I have noticed that the spacing on the backspacer tends to match, uh, as a general rule, the jimping. And here's a Hattie as well. So you kind of see it, that's too many knives. So there, the spacing there. Um, and then the jimping on the blade. It's just a pattern. I like it. I like when they do that. Um, but it's kind of funny, I didn't know that they didn't match it on the Quantum. Just one more cool, fun fact that I learned today. So, that's awesome. Um, otherwise, the knife's pretty standard F3, good, good ergonomics. The jimping's definitely usable, and it's interesting how they stop with that much left on the blade, because they're kind of telling you you want to put your finger more forward on it and get a better grip. I really dig that they do that. I really do think, I really dig, but at the same time, that what they're telling you with the top of the blade being so flat, deeper down in the blade, hopefully you can see that, the camera's not gonna mess with me. You can see how the top is nice and flat. That means they're going for a forward grip. So if you wanna do finer cuts, if you are uh, if you are actually are gonna use it for hunting, you can get your thumb right up to the tip and it is nice and comfortable. And, uh, and it's not gonna be a problem, right, for just finer slicing. 
that's very fat and I like that detail. That to me is a nice sign of someone thinking about what the knife is being used for and uh, and making it that way. Because the top of this kind of reminds me of an F95-0 in that it's super fat and purposeful, which is awesome. Um, you know, people are going to worry, oh, is Chromax PM, is that going to be resistant to water? Yes, it's just fine. You know, if you look up uh, what the knife excels at, it will be just fine. It's not going to, you're not going to worry about resting it. Blood, I don't know what that's going to do. I don't know what that's going to do. Flipper tab is nice. It's got the cutouts into the frame as well, as you can kind of see here. That's kind of now standard sheer gore off. Uh, it's what you'd expect. So as you flip it down, your finger falls inside and it's nice and smooth. No issues there. Uh, it's just a, a great all around product. Uh, it's just a great knife. Like there's still a few of these available online, which just floors me because there's only 50 of them. Okay. This is custom division territory of availability. There are 50 of these. Okay, I have one of 50 right here, and you can still buy them online. I'm really tempted to order probably a few more of them for that reason, because they're going to be, I think, harder to get here in you know a few weeks from now. And, uh, and I just think because of the uniqueness of having no clip on it, the thinner F3 design, coupled with uh, the super cool orange, high vis orange with the kind of micro milling that's taking place on it that's different than the g10 there it's got a great clip it has a backspacer which is rare at this price point you've got the shirogorov logo multi-row bearing system to me this is a home run of an of a knife if this knife had a clip on the back it would have sold out in seconds literally seconds but for some reason, people don't seem to like that. And I just go, look, it's lighter. Put it in your pocket and it feels like a bug out. It just kind of disappears. You know, it's a thinner F3. Um, you know, if, it, if you want to use the case, go ahead, use the case. Um, for me, the selling feature is that I can just throw it in my pocket. And it's lighter and totally usable. And it's not a, it's not a $2,000 knife. Yet it's durable, it's water resistant, it's got it ticks all the boxes as far as I'm concerned. It's a beautiful sheer gore off. And the action on this multi-row bearing, let's uh, let's take a look. So this is straight up. Look at this, this is out of the box. Controlled, doesn't fall, doesn't fall, it'll hold every spot. Okay? And then look, this is the level of how much effort you have to give it for it to drop. Look, whoop. it's just, it floats home. Like that, it's just nuts. Medium detent, I'd say. You can't really fail this one. Actually, I don't think I can fail it. I'm gonna try. There you go. I can, but I have to really try. Any any level of general flickability is going to launch this thing out without any problems. Feels great. And it's only going to break in smoother. All the flicks on this knife are basically all it's ever seen. So, uh, this guy is currently in the store available. Um, if you want to check it out. Otherwise, uh, I might have to backfill a few more of these because I think they are going to be hot on the secondary eventually which is cool but if you're buying it to use it that shouldn't be something you worry about buy it because it's going to be built for the task and it's not going to let you down in the field honestly this is a stunning knife you know the g10 is amazing high vis chromax pm is a super reliable stout metal uh, beautiful centering multi-row bearings flipper tab it's, it's going to be solid for years and i love that they uh, they have the sheer gore off on the blade which is nice uh, personally, I wish it were kind of embossed back here on the handle. I think that'd be kind of cool, but on the blades, fine. Most Chromax blades, that's what they do. And it's probably a cost-saving measure. And then you have that Chromax PM written there as well. So it's cool. Well, I think that is going to be it for the F3 Outdoor. 
If you have any questions, I, I definitely encourage you. Let me know because I, I will talk till my uh, I am blue in the face. And uh, you know, if you want to check out the knife, go check out bladezilla.ca. Um, if uh, by the time this video comes out, it may be sold, but uh, when I'm filming this, it is available. So uh, and it is online currently as well. So we will see. And uh, otherwise, thank you very much for stopping by, checking out the knife, and uh, seeing all the different Shirogoroffs that we have in the lineup. And it's always fun to sit here and talk to myself alone for 25-30 minutes about knives because it just kind of shows me how much I love these things and why I do this. So, thanks for stopping by guys. We will see you. Uh, I think I'm going to do Monday, Thursdays going forward. It seems to be the video drops make sense. Uh, for me, so that's what I'm going to be doing. So thanks for stopping by, guys. Any questions, leave them below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, share, all that yada yada stuff. And until next time, we will see ya. Cheers.